What if the world's largest C and C++ code bases could evolve without stopping the assembly line, without rewriting millions of lines, and without surrendering performance? For decades, the status quo bent under its own weight. Backwards compatibility preserved every rough edge. Build times stretched, tooling groaned, memory safety incidents kept appearing. Production systems in browsers, operating systems, finance and telecom met a hard truth at scale. When the language cannot retire old debt, the debt taxes every change. The question was not whether C++ could keep going, it was whether teams could keep paying the bill forever. Before Carbon, teams lived inside constraints that showed up on every dashboard. Cold builds took tens of minutes on large monorepos, and incremental compiles still spiked into minutes when templates exploded. Peak memory for builds ballooned into tens of gigabytes when metaprogramming met header duplication. Link steps remained slow and opaque. Debug configurations fought a thicket of undefined behavior that sanitizers could catch only after the fact. Reliability suffered in ways that matter to executives as much as to engineers. Chromium security teams have reported that roughly 70% of serious bugs traced to memory safety, and Android security teams showed multi-year charts where shifting to memory-safe code steadily dropped the share of memory vulnerabilities from over three quarters to under one quarter. The lesson was clear. At scale, time, memory and reliability were not abstract properties. They were invoices. The protagonists were not language dilettantes. Chandler Carruth, a longtime Google engineer and LLVM leader, stood up at CP North in Toronto in July 2022 and laid out a successor language strategy for C++ from inside the arena that needed it most. Richard Smith, former Clang lead and editor for the C++17 and C++20 standards, brought committee discipline and deep core language expertise. John Ross Perkins added implementation horsepower across the toolchain. Around them, an open community formed on GitHub, Discord and the LLVM circuit, with panels at Euro LLVM and talks at C++, now documenting each design decision in public. The project was started at Google, but its governance and artefacts live in the open. The design philosophy was a simple bet. Preserve C++ level performance and systems reach, pair it with principled safety and modern generics, and make bidirectional interoperability with C++ non-negotiable so migration can happen one library at a time. Carbon prizes clarity over cleverness, checked definitions over late template errors, and evolution over stasis. The tone from the start resisted language tribalism. As Chandler Carruth put it, if Rust works for you today, you should use it. The problem Carbon aims at is not beating someone else at a benchmark. It is giving C++ organizations a credible path forward. Under the hood, the project chose mechanisms that serve that path. Carbon is a statically typed, ahead of time compiled language with a conventional toolchain that produces object files and links into native executables. The implementation builds on familiar infrastructure, Clang, LLD, libc++ and bazel to script the pipeline. A nightly toolchain compiles carbon source and the language is available on compiler explorer for experiments. Interoperability is engineered, not waved at. Carbon will call into C++ with no marshalling overhead and C++ will call carbon the same way. So a single library can switch without uprooting its neighbors. Generics are definition checked. That means the compiler verifies the contract of a generic at its definition, rather than reinstantiating and rediscovering errors n times at each use, which reduces compile amplification and yields clearer diagnostics. Templates remain opt-in for seamless C++ interop when needed, while check generics enable type erasure and dynamic dispatch without extra boilerplate, shrinking binaries and allowing heterogeneous containers. On safety, Carbon's plan is staged. First, a migration dialect that behaves like C++ where required, marking remaining undefined behavior as explicitly unsafe. Then incremental refactors towards safer APIs, with defaults that encourage bounds checking, harden initialization, 
and provide a debug mode that is more comprehensive than typical C++ debug plus address sanitizers while aiming for lower overhead. Tooling is part of the design. The roadmap includes source-to-source -source translation, from idiomatic C++ to carbon, to jumpstart large migrations, and semantic intermediate representations to power static analysis and refactoring. The milestones form a straight line from idea to implementation. In July 2022, the project went public at CP North with an explicit successor strategy. In 2023, the team documented the path from interop to memory safety at C++ Now and began delivering design notes for generics, class types and inheritance while evolving governance in the open. In 2024, they stood up a compiling toolchain, published nightlies, archived an earlier interpreter prototype, and shipped talks and panels at Euro LLVM, CP North, and NDC Tech Town, showing the march toward a 0.1 preview. In 2025, the published roadmap expanded scope to design the memory safety story earlier, based on community feedback while continuing toolchain work. Communities adopted Carbon not as a production language, but as a living experiment. Compiler Explorer added it, conference programs debated it, and contributors from Google and beyond kept landing code and design proposals. No Fortune 500 rewrote a fleet in Carbon. That is not the stage of the experiment. Against C++, Carbon's bet is sobriety over surprise. It keeps raw performance and native deployment, but replaces sprawling, unconstrained templates with definition check generics and rejects perfect backward compatibility so the language can actually remove debt. Teams choose Carbon when they cannot rip out their C++ core, but want to start replacing the worst parts with clearer constructs while staying in one build system. They reject it today when they need a battle-hardened compiler, a standard library with a decade of scars, or a stable ABI promise. Against Rust, the comparison is sharper. Rust gives strong compile time guarantees with a borrow checker and ownership model that have proven effect on memory safety and defect rates. It also asks you to meet the borrow checker where it lives or sprinkle unsafe around the edges and interop with large object-oriented C++ systems can require redesign. Carbon, by design, does not try to outrust Rust. It tries to let a C++ system move in small pieces, keep virtual dispatch and familiar idioms where needed, and layer safer APIs later. Teams choose Rust when they can carve out greenfield subsystems or accept redesign for stronger guarantees and a mature ecosystem. They consider carbon when wholesale rewrites would stall product roadmaps, but they still want a path to reduce the risk profile of native code. Against Go, Carbon keeps tight latency, native deployment, and zero garbage collection pauses for performance-critical paths, while Go wins on simplicity, concurrency ergonomics, and an enormous standard library for cloud services. If your problem is a fleet of RPC services and you control interfaces, Go likely remains the faster path to a stable system. If your problem is a performance-critical library embedded in a browser or game engine, the Carbon and C++ world remains closer to the metal. The downsides are concrete. First, Carbon is young. The toolchain is nightly grade. Platform coverage is limited, and many language features are still under design. Second, the ecosystem is thin. There is no standard library with years of CPU cache tuning, no crate scale package universe, and few battle-tested integrations. Third, Interop promises are technically hard. Bidirectional calls across templates, exceptions, and ABI details will carry edge cases that only surface under load. Fourth, governance stability matters for a successor strategy, and sustaining momentum in an open community over years is its own engineering problem. One example of a rewrite decision happened inside the project itself. The early interpreter used for demos was archived in favor of a compiled toolchain because the interpreter diverged from the evolving language and could not carry the interop and performance goals of the roadmap. Outside the project, several security-minded teams that evaluated their options have moved toward Rust for production components, including the Chromium project's decision to support Rust libraries from C++, precisely because shipping timelines demanded mature tooling and proven safety today 
rather than the promise of it tomorrow. Even in experiment, Carbon's choices map to measurable outcomes that organizations care about. Definition check generics reduce compile time amplification from template reinstantiations, shrinking both time and memory during builds on large code bases. A default debug mode that bakes in more checks than ad hoc sanitizer flags can cut mean time to reproduce by turning silent, undefined behavior into visible, erroneous behavior early in test pipelines. The stage safety plan makes an explicit promise. Get the code compiling and running with minimal changes, then lower the defect rate over time by migrating APIs to safer defaults. If Carbon succeeds, it will aim at the same class of metrics that have already moved elsewhere. Android reported memory safety vulnerabilities, dropping from roughly 76% to roughly 24% as memory safe code grew. Chromium has for years traced roughly 70% of serious vulnerabilities to memory safety. The project tries to give C++ shops a path to bend those curves without halting product development. Today, Carbon lives where languages begin, on GitHub, in nightlies, in conference talks, and inside small experiments. Contributors continue building the compiler, the linker path, the semantic IR, the generics implementation, and the C++ interop layer. The short-term debates are practical. How strict should unsafe be marked? Which library patterns encourage dynamic bounds, checks without penalty in release builds? How to design migration tooling that produces readable code developers will actually maintain. The near-term roadmap themes are steady. Ship a credible 0.1 to let teams run pilots, stabilize interop across toolchains, keep documenting design rationales in public, and push the safety story from intent to implementation. Do not choose carbon when a deadline demands a stable compiler, a rich standard library, and a mature ecosystem. Use Rust for memory-critical new components. Go for cloud services that prize simplicity and fast onboarding, or stay with modern C++ when your team already has tools and conventions that work. The status quo failed because it could not retire its debt without breaking its contracts. Carbon's wager is that a successor language, built beside C++ rather than against it, can let big systems turn while the wheels stay on. If it works, the payoff is not fashion. It is fewer nightly build breaks, clearer errors, safer defaults, and a migration path that acknowledges the real cost of rewriting the world. In a field that ships trillions of lines and cannot stop, that is a bet worth placing.